Hello guys, so welcome back to our Beachy Day lessons. So in this lesson, you know, we're gonna discuss or, sh or show, you know, the, <coughs> the design of the deep flip flop, uh, especially the one which, which has 2D latches or master and slave uh, latches, D latches. We studied, you know, or we saw, uh, or we show the code for the D latch. I just created, you know, a package out of it. And I'm gonna use this package here in that design. Okay. <clears throat> So let's check on that. So uh, it's really an easy one. You just include the D-Latch package. You will define the inputs and the outputs of the complete circuit. So the D-Flip flop here will be, you know, enclosed in that box here. We have the D as an input. Of course, the clock is also an input. And then you have the Q and the Q bar. Okay, so that's basically in the input and the output here in the entity. And remember, with that design here, with the inverter located in the second branch of the clock or the enable of the second uh, D-latch or the slave D-latch, it's a negative edge. I mean, it will walk, the, the output Q, this output here, will copy what was in the input on the negative edge of the clock, when the clock changes from one to zero. Okay. So I created, you know, uh, three signals here. Uh, one is called Q1, another one is called Q1 bar. And uh, basically uh, another uh, <coughs> uh, signal called the clock bar, which is basically this one here. This is the clock bar. which is basically the inverter of the clock input. That's it, okay? And that's what I have done here. So in the beginning, I'm defining, you know, the clock bar as not clock, just in the, in the complement of the clock. All the time, it is a complement, okay? Then I defined the D latch master and slave. First, I, I started with the master, although this is, you know, uh, a VHDL design, this is a combination. This is uh, this way of designing this circuit is a combinational, you know, way of, of designing it. We're gonna see, you know, after uh, you know, in the next video, another design which is a sequential design. So we're gonna learn a new way to code in PHDL. Okay, in the combinational way to design or code in PHDL, the the order doesn't matter. You can define this line here as the third line. Let's do it even. That's fine just to, to stress on the idea, you can bring this slave as you know, the first line. You can do whatever, the order doesn't matter at all, okay? So here is the master, D latch. This master D latch has its input, the first input D, the second input, which was basically the input, but I'm gonna, connect its second input, which is enabled to the clock, just like what we see here. Then, what it's out? It's out is basically an internal signal. That's why I defined this Q1. So this is basically Q1. And this is basically Q1 bar here. Although I'm not using uh, Q1 bar at all, I'm just using Q1. Okay, just to differentiate it from Q, I just named it Q1, okay? And uh, then uh, I defined, you know, the slave D flip flop, I'm sorry, D latch. So, uh, I'm sorry. Then I defined the, uh, the slave D latch. The slave D latch has an input D and this D is just connected to Q1. That's why you have here Q1. The second input now is not clock, it's a clock bar. The signal that we have defined and assigned it to it always is a complement of the clock. Then the output here, you have uh, uh, 
uh, for the output you have Q. And uh, Q1 bar, so, uh, sorry, this is, uh, yeah, and the Q bar, I'm sorry, Q bar, this one. Which is basically the second output of the whole circuit, okay? That's basically, that's it. You know, you have three components in the circuit, so you have just three lines. The package, uh, this line that defines the package, it's input and it's output. This line that defines this package, it's input and it's output. And this inverter, that's it. Okay, now let's check the, of course, we, we should combine. Let's combine this. Because we change the order. Just to stress on the idea that the order doesn't matter in that particular kind of coding. In the next video, when we started process, process is basically the main stream, you know, uh, style of coding to code synch synchronous circuits, which are our, you know, topic right now in that part of the course. Okay, let's start, restart the simulation because I already started it with the original design. So here is a test bench. The test bench, you know, uh, is, is exactly the same, just as, uh, like the ones that we studied before except for one line here, which is that one in which we generate the clock. Okay, for the clock, it's just, it's a normal input, although it has a signal, so it has a continuous periodic signal, square wave signal, that should be always all the time, you know, going into that particular bin or input. And here is how we generate, uh, you know, clock signals in VHDL. We just define a, a signal for it, just like any other input or output, but then you apply this particular line of code. That's it, okay? Here you, you define half of the signal uh, at, at, uh, at which time the, the clock will change from one to zero from, or from zero to one. This is a half cycle, okay? So we're gonna generate here using this line, a clock signal with, with, with cycle three nanoseconds, okay? If this is, for example, two, not 1.5, it will be a clock signal will cycle equal to four nanosecond and so on. And here is, we just put some random, you know, uh, uh, values for the D, okay? And uh, after each change, I you put a delay of three nanosecond. Okay, so let's run this. It is, the clock is in, in, is in yellow, so you guys can see it can see it, you know, in a clear way. And here is the D, the first uh, input. And here is the Q and the Q bar. First Q and Q bar, as you see here, always complement of each other. Look, this is one, this is zero, this is zero, this is one, and so on. So we're gonna just, you know, look at the Q, but you, but you know, it's zero complement. And let's look at D now. First, because before we go to D, this red, red signals means these, these are undefined, undefined. So we didn't initialize the Q and Q. I don't like to initialize, but we may use this feature in the future. But you can initialize the outputs in in, uh, in VHDL. And we're gonna, we may see this in the future. Okay, we may need, we may, not, we may not need. But here, it's not a problem. So uh, in the beginning, look, the first, uh, remember, this is a negative edge you know, D flip flop. So the output will uh, will copy the input only at the negative edge. The first negative edge came at this particular moment at four nanosecond here at four nano. So at that particular moment, you know, the, the input D is copied to Q. And of course it's in, it's a complement copied to Q bar, of course. Okay. So at that particular moment, you know, Q become one. How about before before that, uh, there was no negative edge, so that Q continues with its current value. This is the concept of the memory, as we say it. The output will change only when there is uh, a clock edge, okay? So that's basically what happened. So it was undefined and it's continue undefined until the first negative clock edge reaches as four nanoseconds. Good. Look at here. D changes from one to zero, although here is there is a positive edge, not negative edge. That's why Q doesn't change. Q changes only at the negative edge. 
Here is a negative edge. And now Q can copy D. D at that particular moment, which is eight nanosecond exactly, is zero. So Q will be zero. And so on. Until we reach that particular moment, again, D changes from zero to one. Q doesn't change because this is a positive edge. But then we reach the negative edge at 20 nanoseconds. So Q at that particular time copied D. So D at 20 nanoseconds is, is one. So Q will be one, of course, Q bar will be zero. Okay. Here D changes from one to zero. That's right. And we also have a negative edge. But here VHDL will do because this is, you know, uh, a kind of, you know, a hard, you know, moment. Because here, if you look carefully, D has two, has two values. At that particular moment, has two values, one and zero, okay? But if we practically look at this circuit, let's, let's, let's do it in a practical way. So in a practical way, let's write, write something in here. So signals in real world, in practical world, doesn't change abruptly here from one to zero. No, they don't do that. But if you have, for, for example, a scope and you zoom into any signal that makes such a change, you're gonna see something like this. It, it linearly changes from one to zero. So at 24 nanosecond, at that particular moment here, D is still one. So that's basically, at that particular moment, that's basically the value that was copied to the output, okay? So Q is one and it become again one, so it doesn't change, okay? So that's that's important to understand. So here, uh, VHDL or so the guys that design VHDL are really smart. So, okay, they know that practically there is no signal that can change abruptly from one to zero. This is just an idea, perfect case, but it takes time. It, it decreased, you know, but, it, but of course, very, very, very short of time, you know, uh, but at the end, at 24 nanoseconds, it was one. Then it, it, then it starts to, do, to decrease until it reaches zero. So that's why here, even we did changes at from one to zero at a negative, negative, negative edge, but Q continues as one. That's really important to understand, okay? Here, another edge. So now uh, Q, D is zero. So at the most of half cycle, at the most of uh, you know, edge here, Q doesn't, Q doesn't change. But at the negative edge, Q will change. And we're gonna continue until this edge here. So this edge, a negative, negative edge. And then uh, Q will, will, will copy the value of D, so it become one again and so on, okay? That, that's basically, you know, uh, the, the design of, the master slave design of the flip flop, okay? It's really a neat one, and we're gonna use it all the time, guys, okay? Uh, in the next video, we're gonna see uh, another, uh, uh, another design for the flip flop using what's called the process, which is a coding style for synchronous, synchronous circuits. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.